evening everyone and welcome back to the channel tonight we are at uh, well it's all called Eli's and it's also called the Rose and Crown pub now this pub is a bit unique in that it doesn't actually have a bar and I'll see if I can show you some cuttings of that but they have quite often a classic car meet and we're here on a Tuesday night and it is really really busy oh I don't know quite how that Freelander got in there um, but we've got a great selection of cars, so we're going to have a quick wander around and uh, see what we've got. Well, we'll start this nice little frog eye. And then next to it, looking like it was on a uh, sales pitch from the 1960s, is a Triumph. I believe that's a Vitesse test because of the uh, twin headlamps. Let's have a look on the back. Yep, it's an 2-litre overdrive Vitesse. With a very 1960s go faster racing stripe. And then we've got a classic Mini. Yeah, nice to see you. <laughs> nice Triumph Herald, oh sorry, Triumph Vitesse convertible. With a Morgan. Oh. Nice Austin Healy 3000 just leaving. Austin A35. Uh, modern SLK. And then we got a Wolvesley, I think this is a 1500. I'm sure I'll get corrected if it isn't. As ever, if I get something wrong, mention it in the comments. A nice 32 Ford V8 custom car, hot rod, whichever is the best description. A nice, lovely looking MGA here. Let's have a look inside. It's a 1600. Looks really nice, that one. <coughs> and, uh, now, this is a rare make. It's an Armstrong Sibley. Very much for that sort of Rolls-Royce limousine style car. Let's have a quick look on the inside. No, really, the Camaro. And then there's a Daimler DB18 drophead. That's quite a rare car. Yeah. Can't say I've seen one of these before. Let's have a good look round the back. And then next to it, we've got a little GTM Libra. Now, I've seen this car locally, and I'm sure it used to be red. And I think it's been wrapped. I think it looks quite good in the orange. These are a metro-based car. They were a really good, uh, good car. It was the last one produced by GTM. Good competitor to the leash, really. That was, and then we've got a MGA. Nice period accessory of the uh, luggage rack on the back there. And then next to it, I'm going to get corrected. I was going to say it's an Austin Seven, but I think it's too big. I'd imagine it might be an Austin Ten. It's definitely an Austin. And we've got another classic mini. And then the Ford Zodiac. That would have been the predecessor to the uh, Ford Granada. 
and then a sunbeam tiger. This was similar to the uh, AC Cobra in the day. Yeah, oh, sorry, it wasn't. I thought it was a tiger. It's an alpine. So that's got, I think, either a four or six cylinder engine. They did have a version with a V8 Ford engine in, which um, was a sort of competitor to the AC Cobra. And then we've got a lovely Rolls Royce next to it. And then... Ooh, now I'm going to take a punt. This is 2CV based. I think it's 2CV based. Nice little unique pickup. Oh, look, there we go. There's a clue. 2CV rear lights. Oh, we've got a few people leaving already. Nice little MG uh, Roadster there. Was it? Nice. Oh, you enjoyed that out then. Yeah. And then we're going to take a quick run over here. Another Sunbeam Alpine. And a fairly light, for what it was, Mini Moak. I think these possibly the ones produced in Australia but the what would that be 1979 and then we've got a Ford console same era as the uh, Zodiac we saw earlier and then we've got a little Austin 7 special I love the riveted uh, bodywork on this one I think that's what they call the boat tail. You know what it is? Austin 7 Special? It's a Speedex, I think. Okay. <laughs> you think it's a Speedex? Speedex, I think. I must admit, I thought it was a bit of a homemade one. <clears throat> it might be, but it okay. could still be a Speedex. Okay. Citroen Traction Avant, am I correct on that one? Citroen, Citroen Traction Avant? Yeah, but... Um, <coughs> can't remember whether they built this model in style or not. Um, my friend there is saying it's uh, French built. And then up next up we've got a Jensen. Is that a CV8? Yeah. CV8, predecessor to the Interceptor. And there we go. Just to prove I'm right. And then next to it. I'm struggling on this one. I may have to uh, <laughs> consult my colleague. Oh, it's a Morris. Don't know which one, but we'll put it in a little subtitle. And then this is, I believe, a Ford, Ford Thunderbird. Real great big bit of American metal there. Then we've got a little classic mini. And then this one I'm probably going to have to correct with a subtitle, but I think it's a SE5 or SE6 skimmer. So it's the predecessor to the GTE with a uh, with a boot rather than a hatch. <laughs> We've got a nice MGB Roadster. Ah. And then this is a bit unusual because you're going to think, oh, it's a Mini. It is a Mini. But it's an Innocenti mini, mini. So they were built under licence, I believe, in Italy. You see, this one's actually left-hand drive. And what else have we got? We've got an MGB GT there. 
American pickup. That's a Chevrolet. Then we've got a TVR. It's a V8, so I'm guessing that's an S3 or an S4. And then we've got a MGB Roadster. And then there's a TR5, I think that one is. And then a lovely Jensen Interceptor. Look that lovely walnut dash in there. And TR6 finishes that roll off. Right. And we've got a 1968 MGB GT. Look how clean that is underneath. It's immaculate. And then we've got a Spitfire. Followed by a nice MG8. And then... Now, that's an Austin Cambridge, that one. The Morris Traveller. I think he's closer to that. And then, and then another Traveller. Very nice. I like it. I'm going to take a punt. I think that's the Austin Big 12. Another attraction of Bond. As my colleague mentioned, some of these were built in Slough in England. A newer member of the uh, classic world. Nice Japanese flag there underneath. We've got this little Honda, I think it's a CRV. Were they a CRV? Let's have a look on the back. Oh, don't know, it's been debadged. So nice little MGB GT there. Alongside a uh, XJS. Then we've got a Westfield. Not sure what engine that's got in it, but with a left-hand exhaust. Could be a Z-Tech. Could be a Crossflow. Uh, lovely bright yellow RS2000. And we've got a stack. And then, ooh, look at this. I understand this car holds a few records at Santa Pod. Obviously a full popular with a slightly bigger engine than the original. And incredibly, the wheels look like they're under basically standard arches. Oh, we're back to an MG8. And then there's a Rover 10. Has this got something exciting inside? No, it looks like a standard engine. And then that is a TR2, I think. And they kept saying, you know, sort of fix it, Dot. I'm trying to change the different size. Austin Healy 3000. Little frog eye sprite there. Then we've got Lotus Elise. And then I think we'll take a little walk over here. I'm not sure I'm going to have time to do the other fields. We'll see what we can do. So we've got a 1970s Land Rover there. A couple of VW campers. Anybody know about split screens? More windows? The bigger the price? So that one's definitely up there. Up there. And then we've got a Jaguar Mark II. Mark one Golf Convertible. Oh, someone's just fired something up. Another trying for test. I think that's the third one of the night already. And then a MG TD. I've had my little course on these. It's all down to the front wings. So this would have been just post war. SLK, very much a coming classic. Porsche 911. 
And then, the, oh, we've got another TR2. Let's have a quick look inside this one, shall we? Then we got a, a um, Triumph. Is that, I'm not sure if that's. Would that be a Vintess? Mm -hmm. It's only got single hand lights. Probably um, a Herald. And then there's a nice Aston Martin just leaving. <laughs> and then we've got a nice Alfa Romeo GT. Oh, uh, no, Alfa Romeo Spider. Or GTV Spider, is it? I'm not sure which. I always think these are a pretty car. Then we've got an MX-5. We've quite a substantial body kit there. Next to the uh, more standard model. And we've got a Land Rover. And then a very old Land Rover. Look at that. Very much got its exposed body. Of course, these were aluminium, post-war. That was the uh, material that was available. That looks a very, very early car. Do you call them cars? Yeah, I suppose you do. Then we've got Mark II Golf and a um, MG Midget pre-war. And then that's an Austin 7, even I know that. Then there's the, uh, the the Jap guys. That's a 200 SX, I think. Yeah. Lexus IS 200 there. And then I think that is a Sora, the white one in the background. Then there's that electric car. With sliding doors, I guess that is. And then, oh, there we go. Fiat 128. No, sorry, got that wrong. 131. 2000 twin cam. Then you've got another fairly early Land Rover. That is a 1959, so that is quite an early one. Then it's more modern counterpart. And then we've got a Rover, three and a half litre, so I have the V8 engine, and a Morris Minor pickup. So let's take a look down the back. Well, we've moved through to the uh, the backfield. Just have a look at a few cars here. Unfortunately, because there's been so much to go through, I'm having a little um, trouble catching up. So a few cars have left. Nice MGA there, and then there's a GT6 Mark II, often referred to as the uh, poor man's uh, E-Type. Then we've got a Chevrolet, and I'm not sure which model. It's a Nova. And then, wow, look at this. E30 BMW, but look at those arches. They are mahoosive. Oh, very much a race car. Let's have a look through the harnesses, roll cage, inboard tank. Cool. Anyone from the 70s will recognise those uh, rear windscreen louvres. Yeah, nice one that. Huh? 
Nice, I think that's Mark One Polo Bread Van. Yeah, the <laughs> Another classic mini. There's quite a few of those out tonight. Then oh, we're into the uh, the scraps in the corners down here. We've got uh, Morgan. Which one that is, I don't know. Does the badge tell me? No, it doesn't. If you know what it is, tell me in the comments. Oh, Chevrolet Corvette. And then look at this. Okay, Morris Minor meets 2CV. Well, it's very clearly a Morris Minor boot. I imagine the surround. Definitely a bit of a special, that one. Let's spin round. What else have we got? Oh, we've got another Austin Healy over here. And a fairly iconic of the era. See one of these Subaru in practice, what do you think? Well, I certainly think Colin McRae. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this little wander around the uh, car meet at the Rose and Crown, also now known as Eli's. As you can see, a few of the cars are starting to head home. So if you've enjoyed it, we would really appreciate a like and a subscribe from you because it makes so much difference to us here at Oscar's Garage. See you next time.